And there's lots of these things. It's not as if it's just one thing. And the other problem is these wretched people in Europe keep on giving incentives to other people, out, even outside the EU, never mind in it, to manufacture and do things that we do here, and they move our industries out of the country to somewhere else. A classic case is um, Peugeot Talbot in Coventry, because that was a case where the, where the DTI, again, the Department of Trade and Industry, offered a grant to Peugeot to stay there because they knew they were having difficulties and really, you know, they were going to have to move. It, it, things had to change. There was going to be a new model coming through. And what happened there was that uh, the DTI offered this amount of money and were immediately jumped on by the EU, who say you can't do that because that's not a level playing field. That's not competition. Uh, you know, we, if you're going to do it for them, you've got to do it for Volkswagen and Renault and all the other car companies and Austin Rover, who didn't exist at the time. You know, ev everybody who, who was in the same market. So you can't do that. And they put it on ice. So the DTI didn't know quite what to do about that, I think. They just stood back. But uh, they let it roll for three years while this car company was struggling along trying to get the grant from the DTI, which never happened. And the next thing that happened was Slovakia came into the EU. And the EU decided that Slovakia, because of its low employment rates, deserved the car factory. So they helped them provide a site in Slovakia and encouraged Peugeot to move their factory from Coventry to Slovakia. Now, how does that help the people of Coventry or the British economy? And remember, we're the second largest, the second largest contributors into this pot that they're spending for us. The Germans are first and we're second. So, there's one example. I can give you others. Just at the moment, General Motors have got problems, haven't they? And you've seen it on the television with, particularly in this country, Vauxhall. And they've got plants Stelsmere Port and they've got a plant in Luton, etc. And would you believe the EU have funded, through their fund, which is supposed to be for developing economies outside of the EU, they've, they've funded car factories in Russia, near St. Petersburg. There's two factories there that have got EU money in them that are making Vauxhall Vivas. And actually a third one within the EU, in Poland, which is going hammer and tongs because their production is going up and up and up. Whereas at the same time, our guys down in Luton and up in Ellesmere Port are being told, well, your job's on the line. How can that be? How can they use our money and decide for themselves without telling us that they're going to invest elsewhere our taxpayers' money to take our jobs away and giving it to other people? There are many other cases, including a situation in Egypt where they are trying to put money into that economy and bring new businesses in, into that. So they're, they're giving them funding for things like uh, to make toilets and bathrooms, but other industries as well, which directly impacts on people in this country and will close factories in this country. And again, it's our money they're spending, really. I know it's not entirely our money, but we are the second largest contributor. So why are we contributing £45 million pounds a day, because that's what we do contribute, into a pot that's being spent, not for our benefit, but to undermine the British economy? It doesn't make any sense at all. If we kept our money in this country and used it, to stimulate our own economy and to help pensioners and to do all the other things. Even helping pensioners means there's more money in the country to spend and it, it, it stimulates the economy. We should be doing that. We shouldn't be trying to run the whole, of, the whole of Europe. And it worries me a lot that in the 1970s we were told w that we were joining a common market for trade. Well, you know, why would you do that when you knew at that time that Everything we make is made in Europe as well, and it's our biggest direct competitor. So if you're going to try and trade with the Germans on cars, you're going to have a hard time exporting to the Germans when the Germans are making as good as, if not better, cars than we are, and exporting them back at us. And there's all kinds of ridiculous myths about how good the, 
the, the common market is for our trade, 80% of our trade, 80% of our GDP is within the UK. Manufactured here and, and the service industries are here and we trade with ourselves. 20% is the bit that goes outside, half of that to Europe, they say, and half of that to the rest of the world. So we export about 20%. Talking about statistics, the uh, BBC did uh, a survey. This was at the time of, it was before the European election, so it's before June uh, this last year. And it was determined on that uh, survey that more than 50% of the population wanted to leave the EU, which surprised the BBC because they're fairly pro europe well, they're very pro european uh, but E even better than that, 84% said that they didn't want any more power given to the European Parliament, which is a very interesting statistic. So it, uh, it appears that the British people don't want to be in Europe, but it also appears that they don't realise who they've got to vote for if that happens, because we have a single party, really, in Westminster. It's a monopoly. There's no difference between them. It's a single party called the Lib Lab Con. They have the same policy. Basically, that same policy is let Europe rule and we'll take the money. Because 75% of our law is now made in Brussels. And they're sitting there in the parliament like dummies, watching it all happen. It's amazing. It's just amazing that British people can put up with that. 75%. You know, it sounds like a lie. I'm not lying. It was announced in the Parliament. The actual president, Mr. Barroso, was very pleased about that statistic. He announced it to us all. He told us how much law was being made. And the Germans stood up and actually said, well, in Germany, it's more than that. It's over 80%. And they don't care because their politicians were told, or told the people, from the very beginning, that it was going to be the United States of Europe. We were told a lie. We were told we wouldn't lose our sovereignty. We were told this was all about trade. It's not about trade. It's nearly closed us down on trade. And it certainly hasn't retained our sovereignty. With 75% of our law being made there, we can hardly breathe these days without being told what to do.